Welcome to the buy list episode 33. This is not financial advice. We should probably start this over. I think I'm Welcome to the buy list. This is episode 33. This is not financial advice. This is cardboard. Yeah. Oh, dang it. That was so much cooler oh, in my head. Yeah. Yeah, right. definitely. You have to give it another shot uh, later in the week. Next week. Next week. So, Nate, um, we're hot off calling Birmingham results. Yeah. Uh, Dust till dawn, leaving an impact. Uh, kind of in a hidden way, I guess. There was no Vincent or Prism or Bolton or Leviathan <laughs> showing up, uh, making making their presence known per se. But um, we did see some cards from Dusseldon make uh, quite large impacts, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we definitely did. I mean, you think this is not the top eight I think anyone expected. If If people were, like, making out a bracket for top eight, I do not think they had three Borvos on their bingo card. Yeah. Like two Katsus? Say what? Yeah. And a Yazuri? And Azalea, which everyone thought that hero was dead, but as it turns out, not dead yet. Yeah. And then he just says warmongers this. And then yeah. it just uh dominates you for 19 with blood blood rots inertias and basically you can you can't do anything. Yeah. Uh, and then and Icelander I, obviously sneaking in there too. Yeah. Um you would think after two weeks, two battle hardens in a row, um, you know, maybe the tech would come in strong against her, but uh she uh she's you know icing out people again. We're yeah. back in an icy meta. I wish I wish Michael Hamilton was more of a heel so he could just be like out there be like put some respect on my name <laughs> and like just it's like I mean that's basically the deck he took the world last year that just like won Cleaned the call up, like, man yeah. like he he built such a beautiful deck it is just the it is truly something that will like just stand the test of time and just ultra consistent great deck it yep. is super consistent and just waits for every, like if your deck fumbles just a little bit it's all yeah. it takes yeah it's all it takes. yeah um, yeah so, being in the opponent i've never played icelander myself i've played against that deck you know iterations of it maybe not the straight 60 of it but uh yeah, yeah it's it gets pretty disheartening like you are, you seem to always have a decent life lead and you're like, yeah, I got this. I got this. I just have to close this out. And then it's like ice vein fused. You're like, no, God, no, no, not like this. And then all of a sudden you find yourself at even life. And then you find yourself at like 10 and you're like, well, I'm dead. Okay, cool. That, mm -hmm. uh, it always gives you, it seems like watching the stream games too. I can see that. And that's why I bring this up is because it gives you a glimmer of hope and then just snatches it away from you. But like, actually you've been losing this whole time. Like, oh, you were never man. going to win. <laughs> like, come on. Come on. We just may, we like to make you feel like you're winning. But we do live in the best timeline. Uh, Ice Heroes, uh, uh, Icelander, and Lexi. Um, Icelander putting putting LL points up for Ice. Come on, let's go. Get that out of, get that out of here. <laughs> Not a big fan of Ice myself. Um so yeah, uh, she's at like 762 LL points, which we know um, is definitely... So all the heroes except for Starvo, once they get to like 600 plus, it seems like it's a snap away and then they're LL'd almost. It's it's a weird thing. I was thinking about this. I was like, wait, old him went from like 600 to 1,000 instantly. Pro Tour, uh, Pro Tour win, calling win, boom, done. Um, Briar... I mean, she's like basically LL, but she kind of did. Well, actually, no, she. Dude, she everyone basically Thanos snaps from six hundred to a thousand, and, and Briar's over there the like nine ninety eight. Yeah, um, but no, I mean, uh, let me get back on track here. So, old him kind of Thanos snapped right past a thousand. Chain did the same thing. Won a pro tour. Um, won a bunch of RTNs to get to like six hundred. Then boom, done. Like calling a. Uh, no, not even a calling win. He just won a pro tour, and I don't know. It, it just seems it like he instantly like PQ season. Yeah, just like an instantly gone, just like to the finish line. Um, 
yeah same thing with prism right she got to 600 with some like low uh more local events and then just shot up over a thousand so you know when you get the when you get to that 600 700 range it seems like heroes are like on the cusp right and i mean you know it, it just depends right meta shift around but it is interesting to see her get to that 750 mark yeah i think I mean, if she wins, like U.S. national, I don't remember how many points U.S. nationals gives, but yeah, um, I I expect her to not be long for this world. Yeah, the yeah. deck is good. Yeah, it is really good. The meta shifted back towards her a bit. Um, you know, I guess a little bit of a spoiler for the episode later in the week. We'll be taking a look at some of the the things the majestics that kind of allowed for the Birmingham meta to, to shape up. Right. We've been pounding the, we've been pounding the pavement and saying starstruck since it was spoiled is a busted ass card. Turns out. Yeah. Like, Heart slap. He didn't Bravo didn't get anything but one card and it made a big difference. Right. Obviously old him leaving helps. Cause it's like, if you wanted to play that style of deck, you kind of only have one choice now. But that card really helps a lot. Crazy part is, in the I guess crazy and cool, is that now seeing it in action, Nate, Unity, uh, especially on Starstruck, some <laughs> the text when you're attacking with it is like nasty, but I think it's better blocking. It doesn't. It's just always good. <laughs> it's like, like how, this is a like... card that's better blocking than it is attacking, and then when it attacks, it's nuts. So like it's, bravo, it's, bravo, or like props off the LSS for that because that's a cool design. Yeah, it's super rewarding to block with, super rewarding to play, and it's fine the pitch. It's a yellow. Yeah, yeah. It, it's nuts. Like yep. I, yeah, bravo is definitely definitely very strong. Um, and like I mean, obviously warmongers is like right, yep. just a insane card. Katsu. Um, yep. And it's part of the reason why, like, you, we see Katsu kind of showing up in Force. But um, I think the most interesting part is, like, no Lexi, right? Um, yeah. Oh, was... wait, one second. Oh, let me. <gasps> no Dromai? Dromai didn't convert? <laughs> <gasps> Jock's Pikachu face. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Who knew the unplayable hero wouldn't convert at a major event? Uh... Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry to trigger all my illusionist fans out there um draw my unplayable still uh, illusionist fans you can come hang out with me uh in the rude blade stands because we now live in the same house guys yeah, you, we, you live we on don't have playable, playable we, don't, we don't have playable heroes my friends sorry to burst your bubble sorry to uh there was 40 briars show up and uh yeah handful of I viscerize think... but um yeah I just it think is... my favorite part about the James White interview is him trying to psyops the entire community and the thinking Dromai was playable. He thought he he said that was bit would have been the deck he would have uh, picked. So I mean, I love you J Dubs, but we know that he loves Illusionist, right? So I think yeah. Yeah. I, I think he was always going to pick that hero. Um, and to his credit, though, that uh, battle hardened that battle hardened. Um, finals that he alluded or that he talked about that game was ultra close um yeah. Yeah. i'm not i don't have enough wrinkles in my brain to tell you what decisions he was talking about um so yeah i'm sure there was some decision points in that game that led to the outcome of that game which you know that's how flesh and blood always works so yeah. um but yeah no joe my didn't show up yeah Interesting time. I think, you know, overall, <laughs> overall, Dust Till Dawn making some moves. We'll take a look at the meta. Uh, we'll take a look at the market. Um, we're recording this on the 31st today. Definitely some big movement today, the Monday after the calling finished up. We'll give it a week to kind of adjust. I think, you know, we'll come out on Saturday. We'll record on Friday. Take a look then. Take a look at maybe we'll look at EV2. Just see where Dust of Dawn sits, some of the cards, um, and then get back into that. But, uh, Nate, tonight we want to kind of follow up our last episode with uh, another, what do we want to call these? Like discussion points or... A thinker. Yeah, a little thinker episode. We're, we're, we're dropping... 
dropping another one on you folks. Um, and this this week's episode is going to be how do you protect your collection? And, um, you know, like, what am I trying to say here? How do you, how do you protect your collection? How do you insulate it um, as yeah. reprints happen, as... Um, you know, uh, as cards get reprinted, right, is I think is maybe the, you know, people see that as a risk to their collection, right? Yeah, I think it's like a, it's a very big feels bad. And like, uh, I think one of the things that we've set out to do here is to try to kind of act as a guide through the the tricky um, marketplace that is like collectible card games, because you have not only like the the meta shifts and things like that, but you also have this like reprint front. So we see Crown of Providence, and mm -hmm. now with the bright lights, we see uh, Tunic being reprinted mm -hmm. again. Yep, needed, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, like it, the and you can see too, with, especially with Tunic, you can see the market does not give a flying f what version of the card it is yep they literally just want tunic like yep the non-foil the rainbow foil the white border they're all like seemingly within like maybe 10 15 bucks of each other at any given time and then yeah. sometimes like the white border is going to be the highest valued and sometimes yeah. the non-foils <laughs> yeah the non-foil is the highest value if you're checking tcg player so like clearly there is like a a craving for this card um and I think like hat hats off to LSS because they continue to innovate and surprise us and just like push the envelope and try mm -hmm. new things like for is as, as upset as we can be about how certain certain things play out. And not like, I know not everyone was the most excited about the uh, sketch cards. Mm -hmm. Like they were a little disappointed with how that shaped up. I have full faith that they're like LSS definitely has taken that feedback away and if they do it again they will do it better yeah um and i think that's part of the the reason why we all all love this game um is that we we have faith that like lss is going to be moving in the right direction and trying new things and then learning from their mistakes like there's no doubt that they learn from the mistakes of monarch tales everfest and like overprinting and trying to make sure that they added collectability back into the game yeah that was another um you know, that's another good point, Nate. And I think if you haven't watched the Push the Point interview with James White that came out over the weekend as well, um, you know, as you're, you know, as you're talking through that, I'm listening, right? And and the one one of the things that I came away from that interview with is that he was very adamant about, man, we ain't just going to keep printing sets with the same formula, right? We're just not going to, it's not always going to be seven legendaries, 10 marvels, 32 majestics and then just hit reprint and reskin it like he actually said he's like that's no fun to just keep reskinning products which yeah. you know when i heard him say that i was like yeah uh, brian gottlieb just said that on arsenal pass as well and it kind of hit me that like they don't owe anybody any answers james white is the dude still right they don't have they don't have hasbro stockholders they don't you know what I mean? They don't have yep. people to answer to yet. Um, so they can just do whatever they want, kind of. And so that makes them a very nimble company in that fact. And like you said, that sketch card, I doubt... I have full faith that we'll probably never see that again in the iteration that we saw, right? It will oh, yeah, come yeah. back better. Um, and I can't. I think that's kind of where this topic for tonight's episode came from. Is that the expansion slot that they announced in Bright Lights, one in fifteen cards. It's in the token slot, so yeah. it's um, you know, it's kind of just outside of the set per se. Yeah. Um, and they've already mentioned Tunic as a reprint, but they in the verbiage, if you read it carefully, they talk about it. It is for it allows them to do reprints. In that slot so there's going to be more than just tunic reprinted in that slot and uh nate when we're looking at the numbers before going um hitting the record button yeah the product sheet has 46 majestics and you did some quick digging um at the other at some other draftable sets majestics um what what we what we've seen typically right yeah so 
typically like a draftable set post the first block is anywhere between 27 and 31 majestics mm-hmm. this set has 46 so that means we're getting majest like there's going to be a number of them in that expansion slot. Not probably not all 16 of the extra slots are going to be, they're not, not, you know, there might be other majestics for the set and there might just be more in this set, but you know, maybe there's eight majestics that get reprinted with, with there only being, um, or not reprinted, but for new cards, right. For new hit for the hero support and stuff like that. With this set being, only mechanologist i also wonder what they're going to do with like you don't need necessarily as many majestics right like yeah it depends I, because they're bringing in a whole new mechanic right where you build your suit out of your deck so i'm guessing a lot of majestics are going to be tied to like the power cards to do that so they're, they're, they'll they'll sure. need to build out that new mechanic so yeah they'll eat up a couple of them but like, yeah, I mean, 16, you know, let's say it's like 30 Majestics and then 16 are in the expansion slot, five reprints, maybe, you know, a, a non-zero number of reprint Majestics uh, looking at you, Command and Conquer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think like the expansion slot is, uh, depends on how it's done, but like one in every 15 backs is relatively rare, but it feels like a very elegant way to slowly drip cards into the card pool while without just being like command and conquers in this set, mm. <laughs> you're going to get one in every case. Don't worry. And like that, that would just like take command and conquer from it's $90 price point to 10 bucks. Yeah. And that's why we wanted to talk about how do you insulate your, how do you insulate your collection or how do you, you know, how do you avoid, Let's say, um, you know, using a recent, town. yeah, using a recent example, right? Um, how do you avoid if you bought, let's say, hypothetically, bought some surgical extractions for sixty bucks or something, right? And then you're not in the know, and you wake up, to, you woke up a week ago, and you're like, why is this sixty dollar card ten dollars, right? Yeah, you know, and unfortunately, you know, that can happen. That one's a little bit different because it was announced, but we know. So you know, we already kind of hit on it. So tunic, right? They're all two hundred bucks, two twenty, somewhere in there. Yeah. We know there's going to be reprint coming. Um, so, like, how do you Nate? How how do you go about you know figuring that out, right? How how would you go about insulating your protection or protecting your collection? I think. Tunic will kind of like spe- Tunic's difficult because yeah, it's that out. one's tough. Yeah, like because it's for I think Crown of Providence. Crown of Providence, is, yeah, is probably the cleanest picture. Like moving forward, how you should probably like manage your collection. Like obviously, not everyone's going to be like financially able to do so, but um, mm-hmm. you look at like Rainbow Foil Crown of Providence was selling from anywhere between two hundred and two fifty for like the last like six months up until the reprint was announced. Um, Cold Foil was. 300 to 350 mm-hmm. in that range um and now if you look at tcg player now that everything's settled you got your non-foil sitting at about 60 you got your rainbow foil sitting about 110 and you have your cold foil sitting at 325 it has not moved yep you if you, so when you went to go buy a crown of providence if you would have like done a little digging spent 50 extra bucks your card would main, would have maintained value instead of losing 150 dollars in value like mm-hmm. 100 dollars in value so like the it's i think like important if you're like looking to kind of like if you find a class that you really enjoy playing if you play a lot of different heroes and like the bounce around to find a way to make sure that like you're insulated from these reprints. Cause I think we might see more and more reprints as the game starts to grow now, because we're going to see these older sets get more and more expensive. Like I would not be surprised if we started to see, I would be shocked if command and conquer was not in the re- uh, reprint in this upcoming set. Mm-hmm. Um, how many, like I would expect LS has to be very careful bringing this to market though. So like one in, five cases maybe 
Like mm. you you might see like very rare. Same thing with Tunic. I think they want to like not oversaturate the market because they've seen what that happens when you oversaturate it. So, but if Command and Conquer's at 90 today and we should have done a little bit more digging and looked in <laughs> at what a Rainbow Foil Command and Conquer is today. Like if you're looking to pick up your play set and let's like, if Command and Conquer drops to, let's say 50 bucks, if it gets reprinted, mm -hmm. 60 bucks, you lose $30 per card in equity versus maybe spending an extra $30 a card, the Rainbow Foils will not move because LSS has made it pretty clear I shouldn't say will not move. They are unlikely to move. But LSS has made it pretty clear that when they are reprinting cards, they are not going to put a rainbow foil variant in for like the generic things. So we saw that with Outsiders, with um, all of the like surging strikes, yep. um, head jab. Yep. Uh, we saw it in Uprising with Scar for a Scar. Like those did not get rainbow foil reprints. So if you're looking to kind of like purchase a, a more pricey majestic or maybe like you have a hero that you love, the rainbow foil variants are going to maintain value over time because also like when there's a reprint, the people who already own rainbow foils and play rainbow foils in their deck are like, oh my goodness, a non-foil variant, let's go. I'm going to go get some <laughs> of those because they're cheaper. They're like, no, I'm a bougie ass. <laughs> That's it. I can't swear anymore. So I'm not going to say it. But you bougie, all right? Mm -hmm. You're not gonna. You want the flashiest variant, and LSS has made it pretty clear that they're only gonna dumb it down as it comes out. So, like, Command and Conquer Fable is a little different, um, but yeah, that outlier a bit there. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, outlier, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I went on a journey, you know, at the beginning of this year, Nate. Um, I think I mentioned it on here before that I wanted Rainbow Foil everything Room Blade, right? So. <laughs> Um, and honestly, once I, and, and what spurred that on is exactly what you're talking about is that I realized that they're not even reprinting commons in rainbow foil. So I was like, oh, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable picking up rainbow foil CNCs. Like, yes, they're expensive. I just typed it in Nate, um, rainbow foil CNCs are like 155. So it's an expensive card. Right. right. Um, but it ain't, it ain't, it's not going to move. Right. Um, or it's not going to just get like whopped by a reprint of a rainbow foil CNC. It just won't. Um, yeah, there's not going to be a, like, especially CNC. There's not going to yeah. be another, if they reprint it, it will be a non foil. It will be, it, it will only drag down the price of the non foils because it, there's not a replacement for the rainbow foil. Yeah. It's not like there's like a newer flashier variant of the card. Yeah. And like on newer, on newer majestics too. And I guess what I was going to, say is that like it doesn't you know when i went to go buy those cards right it, it definitely was some pain but at the same time i was like well i feel pretty confident that these will hold their value more so than um you know other cards right we're talking about strict reprints too here let me make that clarification if there you know something comes out that's just best in class you know better uh, a race, you know, uh, I'm just trying to think of a card that's even close, like a race face or something. If there's just a card that like takes a race face's slot in the meta, then obviously that card, Rainbow Foil or not, is going to go down, right? Yeah. Um, we're talking about just strict reprints. Um, I don't think they'll ever violate the that tenant of it um, not reprinted in Rainbow Foil. So, yeah. And I think, especially with like, especially in Fab 2.0, like, Mm -hmm. The it depends on the card, but like if you're looking for long term, like you you really enjoy the game, you want to maintain like a healthy collection. Like the cold foil variants are not much more expensive. Like cold foil iron tongue versus I uh shout out to Wraith Wears, uh mm -hmm. random shout out. Uh but they had one for fifty dollars on their website, and I almost snap bought it. I was actually just too slow. <laughs> like yeah. fifty bucks, and on TCG Player, the Rainbow Foil is thirty-five. You're telling me for fifteen more dollars, I can get the sick version? Yeah, that looks amazing. I 
yeah and i i guess that's what we're trying to say like um we're, we're bearing it in, in a lot of a lot of discussion here but yeah. overall just when you go to buy a legendary go to buy a majestic right if you're if you want to play with rainbow foils that that's a little bit different when it's in your deck but definitely armor um you know just take a look right like do i you know, is it within 10 bucks? A good example from for me, Nate, is that um, when Lexi became, when Lexi started looking like she was a thing, and also I really wanted to play Riptide, I still do at some point. I picked up um, New Horizon, right? Yep. What I did, because I don't know where New Horizon sits right now, but back, back when Outsiders was dropping, right? Riptide, I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to go buy it. I'm going to go get my Ranger stuff right now. Well... Rainbow Foil New Horizons were like 205 and Cold Foil was like 220. Like when it's that close and sometimes and a lot of times it's like that to be honest in this game where they're like fairly close and you're like, well, you know what? It's more like uh, and so I bought the Cold Foil because it's like, well, that one will likely hold its value or the the holding power of it's going to be stronger than the Rainbow Foil. I think that's like the so, the perfect analogy there, right? Like, um, the the cold foils will just maintain better value. They will go if the rainbow foil goes up, the cold foil will go up with it because they're always so close together. Like, there's never going to be a point where it's like, oh, this rainbow foil is now more expensive than the cold foil. Like, yeah, Fab two point is kind of. I mean, let's let's be honest here. We talked about this even in our last episode too. Fab 2.0 is changing it a bit. Um, and so, like you said, Nate, if you if you're bouncing around to heroes, another example I will give from just the last couple of weeks is I didn't pull a flesh bag, a scowling flesh bag, um, and scowling flesh bag rainbow foils. If you just want to try out Levia, you can get them for like thirty bucks. Great deal awesome headpiece or the rainbow foil is like or the cold foil sorry is like 60 to 70 it bounced around there i end up finding one for 60 so for me because i likely it was for my collection right i just went out and i said well the 30 bucks is worth it because in my opinion i think that might go up because cold foils are hard to pull in fab 2.0 so i went ahead and grabbed the cold foil because I think it will insulate my collection a little bit better than the rainbow foil. Yep. And I, I think we are still, it'll be funny to see like what they do with this next set. Um, I feel, I just feel like cold foils are undervalued still across the board. Yeah. Like, in, especially in 2.0, they are incredibly difficult to pull and they are not showing the like distinct like multiplier difference um and just difference in terms of like raw beauty like gosh cold foil is just yeah they yeah, are really good something different i opened oh man i opened a carapace the other day and dude, that just it just knocks your socks off mm -hmm. yeah for sure um yeah but like we mentioned last week they the rainbow foil and the cold foil both serve a purpose which is yep. good for the game. Yeah. But uh, we're kind of talking collection tonight and like how, how you, if you're, like you said, I, I, I think it's weird to explain it because I think you and I are in the same boat, right? I love collecting this game. I love playing this game. Yep. Um, I'm not a strict player. I know people that are strict players, right? And that's perfectly fine. And this conversation really isn't for you. Um, so thank you for making it this far. But I mean, I, you know what I mean? Like there's players that are just like, I don't care what it looks like. Right. It, it can be yeah. non-foil, just a piece of paper. As long as it's legal, I will just put it down. It can be on, you know, note paper. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. So like that's fab 2.0 is great for that. But if you like enjoy the collectability, things like that, like I do, like you do, um, cold foils, uh, you know, sometimes they're the way to go right for sure yeah or i think most of the time yeah yeah in terms of just like long-term value store like making sure that you're insulating yourself from reprints i think going for a little bit higher rarity is just going to help that long term i think is kind of like the synopsis to that point but um one thing that you just said to kind of made me think of like bab has an interesting way of making 
collectors out of non-collectors. Mm, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, I used to be the person who was just like, give me a piece of cardboard. Give me a cardboard square with a text box on it. Please, no pictures. No, I don't want any of it. And like, look at my freaking shelf behind me. Like, uh, I've got a, <laughs> like a mounting row, like above my computer of like, I've got my graded equipment. I've got my Marvel codexes up there. Like, yeah, it it's something that brings me joy now, which is very weird. Yeah. Um, but like, I've heard like other people just like be like. And like, I want that cold foil because that's mm -hmm. my hero. Yeah. And these are because you get this like emotional attachment to it. And I think it's one of the things that LSS like just really delivers on is like this emotional connection to your heroes. And not only mm -hmm. like man, like you have been in a you have been in a bad mood ever since <laughs> Dust of Dawn was released. Because like you were like you were like a shadow rune blade homie. And you yeah. just want to feel like a shadow rune blade and you don't feel like a shadow rune blade anymore. And like, mm -hmm. it's taken a little bit. You're getting, you're getting a little happier because you're like <laughs> starting to like, okay, it's not, it's not as bad as I initially thought. Yeah. I have been set built in hundred percent rainbow foil now and yeah. EAs and cold foils. It's she's blinged out fully. So I'm going to go down I'm, I'm going to be dying at Nats, but I'm going to look good doing it. Yeah, you are, buddy. I, I don't know. I think I think Vincent actually kind of has a little bit of legs. Not no cap. Yeah, I mean, most likely, I think she does. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm like, dude, it, like, like you just said, if you would have told me last year, be like, oh, you're gonna want to buy rainbow foils. I don't mean like you're nuts. Non foils all the way. I just don't want anything to do with judge judge calls anything you know just like whatever and then i just something clicked in my brain where i was like you know what you know how cool it would be to have an all foil room blade deck <laughs> and then here we are i have a place that a command and conquerors art of wars <laughs> oh it's, but it it's... felt good doing that i mean i did it at the right time so i'm like really super happy about it because everything went up <laughs> um well... so yeah i mean that's the point of this discussion, right? Is that I, I kind of reaped from those benefits of kind of seeing and understanding that. And I hope this discussion helps other people be like, Hey, actually that rainbow foil is too cheap. Tell you what, right now there's some cards in dust of dawn right now that, uh, rainbow foil and non foils are super close together. So yep. majestics. Yep. So just yep. keep an eye on that guys. I like to to uh, end cap the story. I actually, I think it's funny too because I have a, a buddy who he is basically over the last three years that I've known him, he has gone. I'm going max rarity, and then he gets everything max rarity, and then he goes through and he's like, "Holy wait, all my everything that I've purchased is like gone up." And it's more it's like I can't actually justify owning all of this at max rarity because I might have put 2000 in and now it's worth like 3000. It's like I'm actually just going to sell everything. And he goes to like min rarity <laughs> he did the, and then he did the same thing in fab. He went full max rarity on basically everything he would play. Cold foil tunic, Oof. storm striders, like literally everything. Cold foil tech cool foundry heart. And like he, recently he was like, yeah, I actually uh, added everything up and Oh, bro. It's un unreasonable how much it's gone up, and I I'm actually just gonna have to sell everything because it I can't. <laughs> so he's like, it's so weird seeing him at locals because he like just like it's like, wait, is that like a non foil Snapdragon scalers? Are you <laughs> playing with non foil Snapdragon scalers right now? It's like, yep. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about hobbies. I have a couple other hobbies too, Nate. And the number one rule about hobbies: um, never sum, never sum. <laughs> Yep. Just don't sum, guys. Like, just if you get anything out of this episode, don't sum. Don't sum. <laughs> just don't stay sum. away from that function in Excel altogether. Yep. 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 You can you can have all the values in there, just don't sum. Yeah, th things get real scary when you start typing out that that word. But yep. All right. That's a perfect way to end it. Yeah. Don't sum, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we've got, uh, some more, uh, budget deck techs coming, falling on a budget. Mm -hmm. We've got some, uh, we've got some in the hopper here. 
We just got to get uh, get our professional players um, yep. to, to record with us. And then we're going to release some more of those. I'm really excited. We're going to do some Dust Till Dawn heroes. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And like Dust Till Dawn, we, we dropped those two ninja decks and then Dust Till Dawn kind of came, came out, right? And we kind of had to take... Honestly, we've got to take a breath and kind of see where everything shapes up, um, you know, and, um, you know, we're, we're looking to get back to those. We, we do have a couple lined up, so that'll be fun um, for sure. So look for those soon. And then, yeah, later in the week, um, I think it's probably time to get back to looking at some of the some some data, some data and uh, yeah. and uh, see where Dust to Dawn sits going into Nats. Yeah, sure. Well, skirmish then Nats. You know, we're right around the corner. I'll be in Vegas. Very fun. Do you ever play skirmish? Well, some of them are drafts, so I will be playing at least one of them. I think. I do want to draft. That's fair. Yeah, I right. need to draft. But anyways, okay. Enough. Enough of that. Um, all right, Nate. I think. I think that's gonna do it for tonight. Quick. Yeah. Uh, Quick little discussion on collecting fab. I think Wait, it's a good thirty dis minute discussion. Quick thirty minute discussion. Um, but yeah, I think with the expansion slot, it's good to talk about this. Kind of just give our thoughts on it and um, our our uh, our theories on it. So yeah, I'm super excited. I think it's a really cool way for them to support every hero in every set because we we've seen like what one card can really like one card for each hero can really change how that hero's play style and their position in the meta. So it's, it's pretty dope. I'm super excited. LSS is great. James White, come do an interview with us. Um, and give us a spoiler, please, please. Yes. Please? That'd be cool. Thank you. <laughs> Cause you already sent it. Yeah. It's in the mail a couple months out. Dude, my first deck was plunder on boost dash so you know i'm getting i'm i'm getting one of them dash spoilers for sure oh that'd be sweet all right nate i think that's gonna do it thanks right. everybody please like subscribe do all the things hit the bell Peace. tell your friends and family your auntie your uncle Peace. <laughs>